The following program was recorded at Works Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome Supply Chain Brain Editor Emeritus, Jean Murphy. Hello. Today I'm speaking with Steve Hensley, President of Blue Sky Technologies. Our topic is supply chain visibility. Welcome, Steve. Great to be here, Jean. How are you doing? Good. Well, your company provides technology for supply chain visibility. Tell us what trends you're seeing in that area. We are, are experiencing a lot of companies, and I've, I've kind of coined the phrase, they're looking for the quarters hidden in the sofa, if you will. So they're, they're looking for employee inefficiencies, where employees are wasting five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes of time doing events, and, and just most of these companies are looking and saying, yeah, five and 10 minutes wasted adds up very quickly when you're looking at it across you know, 18,000 employees, 30,000 employees. So they're really looking for supply chain efficiencies throughout you know, just getting much more efficient with. We had one client that actually uh, came to us and said that they had actually improved their productivity by 11% by simply just looking in the cracks of their supply chain in all the areas where things were not flowing the way they were expected to flow. And they were also able to reduce their their um, uh, indirect labor time to by 20%. And this is simply just by focusing on the things that are at hand there and, and the operations. So it's a case of, I expect my supply chain to flow in this fashion, and when it doesn't, I need to know and I need to be alerted to that immediate so that I can deal with it. Companies are saying they're, they're very tired of having rear view mirror approaches to these. So the weekends and somebody spends a lot of time putting together Excel spreadsheets so that you can look at it a week later and go, boy, that was a really bad week we had it's too late to do anything about it. So they want to be alerted to all of the inefficiencies and the things going on right then when it happens so they can actually do something about it. So this is the trend we're seeing is they're really <clears throat> going through all of their operations and saying, we think we have inefficiencies in product throughput, in employee operations, in uh, shorts for product and getting uh, product out to customers. So that's, that's pretty much what we're seeing in that space. That's interesting to me because it's a little bit of a different slant to own visibility. We used to think of that term as applying to the inventory and where it was in the supply chain. That's uh, very true. And we still see a lot of the where's my stuff, if you will. And I was just talking with a company this morning and said they, they send purchase orders out to places over in China and Japan and then there's just a black hole. They don't hear anything about it until a boat shows up, you know, in the uh, um, Long, Long Beach dock if, or port, if you will. So we're seeing a lot of that, but from a supply chain visibility perspective, we've really conquered that. I mean, that's just, it's not really an issue anymore. Uh, so they're really looking for some of the inefficiencies and, and being able to track a lot of that. Now, the interesting thing where you were going with this and, and what we do see is so many devices now have onboard computer systems or GPSing devices. So now we can track product as it's crossing the Atlantic Ocean. We can track product as it's going in an 18-wheeler going from Boston to wherever it may be going. And we can actually get very accurate about, okay, we know that it's already three hours behind, so we know it's, there's no way it's gonna be here in time. So it, once again, it's being proactive as, a, as opposed to reactive as you're tracking this product and knowing it's simply not going to be where it needs to be on time, so we need to come up with a plan B. Right. So what is the technology for looking for these gaps in the supply chain that you were talking about earlier where you, <clears throat> you know, can squeeze a little bit? Well, let me give you two examples of that, if I may. In a typical warehousing environment, uh, an employee comes in and let's say they clock in at 7 o'clock in the morning. And they are, there's rules that say they're supposed to get on their first assignment in X number of minutes from that point. So if you have someone who clocked in at 7 and they did not get to their first assignment until 7.15, for most companies that's considered a violation. But they didn't have the tools to actually look at it because they were clocking in on one system and then the warehouse system was a whole different system. So it's just marrying the data between these two systems to say we can now get smart about these types of events. Another example of that is uh, what's called break walk time. So if I gave you a 15 minute break halfway through the day, and from the minute you did your last assignment leading up to the break, if you managed to not say that you were going on break, went out, smoked a cigarette, went upstairs, talked about the ball game, went up and had your break, and you managed to somehow take a 15 minute break and turn it into a 25 minute break, 
Well, once again, for these companies, that's considered a violation and a misuse of, of company time there. So it's 15 minutes here, it's five minutes there, it's six and a half minutes. One client said that they had 1,800 infractions in one week on this, and it was an average of fraction was six and a half minutes. That doesn't sound a lot until you start putting $38 per hour to that, and all of a sudden you've got 70 something thousand dollars right there in front of you. That's, that's big money all of a sudden, so this is the type of things that they're looking for within there. Very interesting. So you provide the information that identifies and then the company needs to take steps to Correct. close those gaps. The way to think of us is we, we mine through hundreds of thousands, if not millions of transactions and say these just don't smell right. So, and it could be employee time, it could be product throughput, it could be uh, someone's figured out a way to cheat a labor standard. Uh, it's, it's all across the board, but it's mostly around resource planning, employee scheduling and labor planning, uh, product throughput, these this stores constantly getting shorted products, why? And how do we you know do better at making sure that doesn't occur? But knowing about it now versus looking at it in a report next week when it's too late to do anything about it. So in terms of the supply chain, the distribution center or the warehouse is the primary focus for companies? Uh, it was originally, it certainly was originally, but we've kind of moved outside of that. We are now looking at their outbound transportation lanes we're looking at the inbound and seeing you know, the suppliers to them, what are they doing right and what are they doing wrong? So you've got a supplier sending you frozen chicken and they were supposed to be there Tuesday at 11 o'clock and they were supposed to only take an hour and a half to load and load their truck and managing all of that and, and scorecarding it. So who's, who are my good vendors, who are my bad vendors? On the outbound transportation piece, it's things about which drivers are, are causing me out of route mileage. Uh, which drivers are stopping at unknown locations, which drivers are rapid accelerating the truck, rapid decelerating the truck, which shifts pallets around. So it's really just tracking the habits of the drivers to say which ones are not our, our best drivers, if you will. And as you can imagine, with fuel costs the way it are, so if, if it, or the way it is, excuse me, if, um, if I've got 15 to 30 miles of outer route mileage per driver per day, once again, that adds up very, very quickly. Because you get four or five miles per gallon out of a truck that size. So. Right. So this is a new kind of business intelligence, sort of. It is. It's supply chain visibility, and it really is business intelligence, alerting, exception management. It's a matter of don't make me thumb through these long reports to see the 99% of the stuff that went right. Tell me the stuff that's going wrong so I can deal with it right now. Right. Do you find companies using this to improve or to target their training of employees? Yes, we do, and in a lot of cases, it's it's to reprimand their employees, if you will. Right. So, um, or but it certainly points out habits of employees because if you can go back and say we've identified a trend with Steve Hensley where he's doing this three times a week, then obviously I'm going to need some kind of of uh, dealing with. I guess we'll say. Right. Uh, so. What else is on the horizon for supply chain visibility? The thing that has us the most excited is. Even within the warehouse, they're now getting to the point where you can set up GPS types of coordinates. So I can now know that this fork truck is at this exact location anywhere in the distribution center. So if you think about it, if I'm now doing that with ships as they're bringing product in, I'm doing it with trucks as they're delivering the product everywhere, I'm now doing it within the warehouse and I can tell you exactly where that truck is, where that person is, and where that pallet of product is. We can get really, really good at, at solving all types of issues within the supply chain concerning things like congestion in the warehouse. You know, this is a busy intersection. We need to reroute some things here. Uh, why is this employee taking this route to go pick this product when he should have taken a different route? So we can get really smart about, in real time, knowing exactly where the product is, where the person is, where the order is, across all of the lanes of, of supply chain. And that's going to result in better velocity, uh, fewer mix-ups, all of those good things. Exactly. And, and as you said, there's so many cases where, you know, when something's in transit, companies just have no visibility to where that product is. They don't know if it's left, if it's getting ready to arrive. And this gives us visibility to exactly where that product is. All right. Thank you so much for oh, joining thank you. us today. you. Appreciate your time. I've been speaking with Steve Hensley of Blue Sky Technologies. Thank you for watching.